Okay, great. Um, okay, so I'll be um, talking about uh, the Ontario Neurogenerative Disease Research Initiative, uh, specifically the neuroinformatics and biostatistics um, team and the pipelines, partnerships, and products we have in place. Um, I'm Derek. Uh, I was a postdoc uh, as part of this project for uh, a number of years until about a week ago, and I'm now uh, Director of Advanced Analytics at the Data Science and Advanced Analytics um, Division at uh, Unity Health uh, here in Toronto. So, um, uh, Andre, for short, uh, what we call the project, um, uh, is fundamentally about people. Um, we have a lot of uh, participants, their family members, friends, and care partners that have volunteered their time uh, in order for this project to exist. We also have a lot of clinicians, clinical coordinators, researchers, scientists, analysts, trainees and scholars, uh, management administration from all sorts of domains and disciplines that really form um, who uh, makes up uh, all of Andre. Uh, so we can think of this as a diverse group of individuals trying to achieve uh, kind of uh, the same, same goals, missions, and outcomes. But really, uh, and what is for today is that Andre um, is data. Um, so when we think about Andre as a, a data problem, um, we usually present it as this hypercube where uh, these colorful rows represent the different cohorts uh, that individuals can be recruited into that are different neurodegenerative disorders with columns here that are the assessment platforms. So the types of data that we have. Uh, where every individual has a massive amount of measurements for each one of these um, uh, different assessment types. And then going back across um, this, this hypercube is uh, the number of visits. So how often a, a participant will, will uh, uh, have their data collected in the project. And when we think about all of this, really um, kind of the foundation that we need to, to help make sense of the complexity and to make sense of all the different data types that exist within and across, we need a foundation of informatics and statistics to kind of bind this together, make it easy, and make it more informative. So I'm going to talk about um, uh, three key things, the pipeline partnerships and products, but um, there's going to obviously be a very big uh, emphasis, which is data standards and um, data packages in the project, and how we, we landed on what we landed uh, for our standards in the um, Andre project. So our pipeline, briefly, is that we have um, uh, what's called brain code uh, by uh, INDOC, uh, which is a system of systems to house different types of data. So REDCap will be for surveys, and SPREG will be for imaging and other types of data. Then all the data go down to the different platforms, uh, specifically experts within those platforms to process, curate, and prepare the data. They'll go through a standards check with the neuroinformatics team, and if it fails, it goes back. If it passes, it goes to an outlier analysis, and then once it passes outlier analyses, it heads out for release. However, uh, I want to go back in time a little bit uh, to when uh, things were not uh, as standardized. And we're all probably very familiar with how uh, different data can be, even when it's all from the same um, project or same initiatives. So this is an example of one data set where we can see some blank cells. Um, sex is coded as one and two, uh, so we are entirely sure what that is. We have something here called red cap event name that seems to indicate visits of some sort. Um, another data set from a different platform had n slash a's, uh, and we had now have a visit column that says o2s. And then get another data set where uh, if we look at some of the commonalities across these, we have some, some column labels that are a little ambiguous if you don't know what they are. Uh, and we have uh, these very large numeric values that I can tell you uh, are supposed to be missing codes. So all of these things kind of reflect the institutional inertia within um, uh, different fields, disciplines, and domains. Uh, typically, this is how different teams would deal with their data if they were not part of a larger um, scale effort. So we need to do something to bring it all together. And this is where our standards um, really developed from. Uh, the basics that we, we fundamentally require is that they're simple, they are comprehensive, generally fair, which we heard a little bit about from um, uh, Donnie. Uh, and we used very key resources uh, to, to determine how we're going to build up our standards. So a lot of these are about data sharing, crossing between disciplines, data organization, which we heard a little bit of um, earlier today from Carl, uh, and then quality curation and fair principles. So I'll be showing you a little bit of uh, the details from uh, Andre's documentation, the standards documentation, and what we call the um, toy data set, which is a synthetic data set 
bundled up to look like a real Andre uh, data package. So all the bells and whistles that are required so that people can follow along and develop these um, data packages on their own within the project or um, outside if ever they adopt these um, practices. So an example snapshot of what we call a tabular, uh, tabular uh, data package uh, is here with all the different files that are essential and required. Um, we also require in the project a very specific naming convention uh, that allows us to quickly search for when something is missing or something is misnamed. Um, so something more automated to make sure all the pieces are in place. So the data package is um, uh, fundamentally several files that are required and some that are optional. Uh, I'll go through some of these in more detail with a, a quick overview of these. Is uh, We have a readme file that is a structured um, uh, tabular file uh, in CSV format to tell you what is in the package. We have a methods document to give you all the nitty gritty details about how the data were produced and, and the ways in which it was produced. And we also have a missing file. Uh, this is a key level of detail that will tell you um, when certain observations or participants are missing on the whole from a data package, even though um, we may see uh, data from those individuals in other data packages or other platforms. So this is uh, say missingness on, on the whole. I'll go into more detail uh, specifically about our dictionary and data files. So our dictionary file is comprised of four columns, uh, something called column label, description, type, and values. And these first two uh, I'll focus us on. Uh, the column label are the variables you will find in the uh, data file. And the description is a short, approximately 200 character um, description of what these variables mean in something that is relatively plain language. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, now what the data set looks like. So we can see the order of these column labels, and it is in the same order in the data set. And underneath all of these um, uh, headers, the column labels, the variables themselves, are the data um, for the uh, uh, data file that we have. So I promise not to take us through 43 pages of documentation. Uh, but I will take us through some of the key value pieces that, that we established as part of our standards that are a little bit different from most other um, standards with some reasons why. Um, so the key indicators are absolutely imperative across these packages, and they are uh, found in every data and every dictionary file. Uh, these are subject, visit, site, and date, and they must be in the first four positions of all dictionary and data files. Um, uh, this helps ensure that we can combine and merge data um, uh, almost arbitrarily across the entire project. We also require data types as part of the data dictionary, and this will help data consumers uh, understand the intent of the measurements. Usually as curators, we know what they're supposed to be and, and what they're supposed to measure, but this isn't always familiar to every type of data consumer once they get access to the data. We have a small list uh, that we define in the project, including text and categorical, ordinal numeric, uh, even mixed data. So when something changes from, say, uh, decimals to a greater than or less than, we needed to accommodate for that. One in particular that I'd like to point out, which may be controversial, is our uh, uh, date, and in particular, our date format. So we've elected to use a non-standard date format. Um, ISO 8601 is regarded as standard unambiguous. However, um, through our experience, it's only unambiguous if everybody knows it and everybody uses it, which is not the case. Um, this is especially problematic if you're trying to determine if it is January 12th or December 1st. Um, and this is uh, kind of a big deal when it comes to uh, aging and neurodegenerative research projects because data points uh, very far apart or very close are, are important to know, uh, especially as individuals with um, neurodegenerative disorders um, uh, going to decline. So, so having uh, absolutely uh, firm dates is key. So no ambiguity uh, is really important. And we elected to go with four digits, three characters, two digits to reflect year, month, and date, uh, day. Uh, uh, effectively as a contract between data curators and data consumers. We are putting a stamp on this to say, we have verified unambiguously it is the state, uh, or at least to the best of our ability, we are telling you this is the date we believe uh, data collection or some um, occurrence happened. We also were motivated by the fact that this is easily readable and convertible for both humans and machines. 
Uh, missing codes is another um, element that we brought into our standards. And what we did was survey the project and lots of individuals across all the different platforms. And we asked, what kind of data are going to be missing in the Ontario Neurodegenerative Disease Research Initiative now and in future projects? And we came up with what we believe is a fairly comprehensive list of the types of missingness uh, that could occur. So instead of something just being missing or instead of having uh, numeric codes, these are uh, predefined and harmonized ways of, of indicating in data, this is missing for a very specific reason. And we can even see a little bit of this in the toy data set under uh, NAW percent, which is normal appearing um, uh, white matter percentage. For a specific participant, we have MART, which um, is a better signal of missingness here. It is due to an artifact in the neuroimaging pipeline uh, or neuroimaging collection process, as opposed to, say, an administrative error or the inability um, due to cognitive or behavioral deficits uh, to actually administer some sort of um, assessment. So this brings me to one of our next stages. I'm, I'm going to shift out of um, our standards and now into another piece of our pipeline, which is the outliers process. It is pretty important for us to establish um, whether anomalies are errors or not. Uh, we have a lot of data on a lot of individuals and they're, they're very heterogeneous. Um, so we wanted to know, are these very strange values real, reflective of something very specific, or is it an error in collection or an error in processing? So the neuroinformatics and biostatistics team uh, for most of the data releases, uh, nearly all of them, perform what we call the outliers pipeline. When data come in in the standardized format, um, we go through a series of uh, analyses. The first is a partial least squares regression because all of these are effectively multivariate data, uh, multi-response data. And um, we use either generalized form or a specific form of uh, partial least squares regression to handle, say, age and sex uh, as, as, as uh, covariates for virtually all data sets. The first stage of our outlier analysis is to perform a principal components or a correspondence analysis, uh, depending on the data types. So PCA is generally for numeric data, where correspondence analysis can be used for categorical, ordinal, uh, or mixtures of different data types, including continuous. The next stage is um, minimum covariance determinant or a generalized version that we developed in the project uh, to effectively handle uh, mixtures of different data types and identify which um, participants may be outliers in a specific data package. And finally, um, finding out which items are, are driving these, anomaly, uh, these anomalies, these anomalous observations through something called the CORMAX uh, procedure where we, again, also developed a new uh, variant of this called the generalized CORMAX so we can handle different data types. And once all that is all said and done, uh, we don't just um, have those pictures and lots of stats and multivariate things because that makes most people upset. We bundle them up into uh, fairly straightforward um, harmonized reports and give them back to the different curation teams and curators so they can review this and then go look in more detail at specific individuals or groups of individuals and say, oh yes, this is an error. I need to go fix this in our pipeline or that was not collected correctly. Um, or, oh yes, this is real. It's just very strange. And all of this is supported um, through a lot of software that we've we've developed. Um, some of it before we did some of this, some of it uh, as we're actually going through the project. So these are through standards and outliers applications, as well as um, uh, an R markdown template. And, and really these are in place so that we can effectively guarantee a harmonization of the process, um, uh, regardless of whatever data are coming in. So this will lead me to partnerships. Um, I'm going to go a little faster in some of these uh, next sections here. So there are two major components um, for the partnerships between um, all of the different platforms in the project, but more specifically the neuroinformatics and biostatistics team and the rest of the platforms. And one way in which we form um, pretty strong partnerships is by working directly with the teams. Uh, you're seeing some snapshots of uh, some GitLab repositories where we've worked with uh, different platforms to help get pipelines set up so that their data are formatted, uh, tested, we're doing some checks, and they come out of this code in a standards ready format so that people don't really have to do anything manually, they don't have to check things, they don't have to compute things. So we're working with a lot of teams um, to do that. The other side of this is really critical because we have a lot of technical skill. Uh, we need to provide our time and training to a lot of the other teams, which includes phone calls, site visits, one-on-ones, and a variety of different beverages after those meetings. Um, lots of reference material that we make available um, usually through Google Docs or on our GitHub. Um, 
Uh, we've run many workshops to help um, have closer ties and deeper explanations of how to do and what to do and why to do um, the things that we do. Uh, and then also a major component of this is the formalization of teamwork. So what does it really mean to do the different pieces? And one way in which we've, we've pushed for this is through something called the credit taxonomy. Um, a lot of people do a lot of things and a lot of it can be hidden in this process. So we're trying to uncover a lot of that through the formalization of teamwork. So next I'm gonna talk about some of the products. Um, uh, products are vital because they support both the partnerships and the pipelines. We can't do any of this other stuff without the things that, that, that make it all run. We've seen um, five of these um, out of many that we have. So documentation, toy data packages that are very concrete examples, some of the tools. Um, but I want to uh, highlight that we need these to make working with our data much easier. And we needed to build these around the standards and the goals and missions of the project. So I'm gonna highlight just two uh, that are on kind of opposite ends that are some of the, the favorites and, and uh, I think most important ones that are up and coming or well established. One of the products is actually a clone of the Wes Anderson package by one of the organizers of um, CSV Conference, Karthik, um, where this is frankly our most popular um, R package. Uh, it helps harmonize the color palette uh, across the project so that whenever whenever someone makes a new graph or, or something, we all get the same colors across all of our papers. Uh, one of the next uh, most important products right now is something that's in a prototype stage. And this uh, ties right back to all of the standards. Um, we developed something called Andre Data Frame or Andre DF for short, where the goal of this is to scoop in the data and the dictionary files, preserve all the missingness while, while mapping them out and then giving you a description of how many things are missing, why they're missing, and then give you some of that preserved information about um, the variables uh, from the, the dictionary in a data frame. So this will bring me to the conclusion. Um, um, a lot of this, this is not possible without uh, a strong culture, um, seeing the same goals and missions and trying to achieve the same goals. Um, it can be very hard to sell a lot of technical things to, to large scale projects, um, but with a lot of those close bonds, with the time spent with people, the value in all of these things starts to become very apparent and everybody uh, will get on board eventually. Um, so with that, I'd like to acknowledge um, a lot of different individuals and organizations. So this work was primarily done at Baycrest through uh, funding available from the Ontario Brain Institute and the Ontario Neurodegenerative Disease Research Initiative with a variety of um, the individual platforms who were subjected to many early versions of standards and software. And we apologize and are appreciative of our collaborators and friends and colleagues who worked with us while we, we built these tools up from the ground. Uh, and those include a number of individuals, including uh, this list here of, of the core group to really push for a lot of the standardization and establishing a lot of these pipelines. Um, a lot of the um, students, RAs, and researchers that have worked with the neuroinformatics team over the years that are really running all these pipelines and making sure everything works. And a number of um, uh, individuals across the entire uh, project in management, leadership, and different platforms that have been vital, uh, both in a supportive way and in a, a collaborative way. So I have a million references, and I'm just going to kind of go through these and leave us on some resources and finally a uh, thank you.